Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Google Workspace Recap, a Tab Geeks Network show. Each week we take you through everything announced by Google Workspace, discussing the updates of the week and other relevant news and announcements. My name is Jesse Nolan, my co-host is Steve Larson, and we're here to help you keep up. Welcome to South Florida, at least my hotel room in South Florida. I'm on the road today visiting family, so for those of you watching, you get to see my hotel room. And to everyone listening, please excuse my audio, the room has a little bit of an echo, hopefully I can uh, fix that up in post. I was going to be attending SADA Impact this week, but unfortunately I had to leave last minute, so I will be following along online, and uh, oh, I'm sure it'll be an awesome show, and I look forward to uh, catching sure the next it'll, one. I'm sure it'll be impactful. Hmm? I'm sure it will be oh, impactful. such impact. And cloudy. It'll be cloudy. Cloudy impactful. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going out there, Steve? You know, not too bad. My, um, my time is not doing so well. It's got a little brown on the bottom and the base. You had a little too know. much time without water? I may may have. It might just need a little <laughs> bit more time to grow. Uh, uh, more time in the sunlight, perhaps? Yeah, exactly. Perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of but, time, for the first time, well, no, not the first time because I was in Israel recording, but for the first time in a long time, I'm ahead of you in time zones, and it's actually almost midnight here. Oh, yeah. It's only 11 o'clock for you. Right. So, uh yeah, yeah. Pretty first time you've been recording later than I have been. Yeah, yeah. I've done next day because you know, far, far away. But um, yeah, it's weird. This is what the late night is like. Mm -hmm. It's all good. Well, that's right. Yeah, you were recording in the mornings, weren't you? Once. Yeah, when I was in Israel, I was ahead of you by yeah. quite a ways. Yeah, that's right. So you did that. Yeah, I did the same thing when I yeah. was different time zone. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well. Let's yeah. I was looking at the Press updates of, this uh, week. Remote work, right? I was looking at the updates this week, and this is the first week that there's uh, ever been more silent releases than published releases. Imagine that first time ever. Intense in the history of, of updates. <laughs> in the history of updates. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had five silent ones and three published ones. Wow. Yeah. Big difference there. So. It was going to be a short episode until they released a whole bunch of silent things and we had five other news topics. Mm, yeah, five or four. Or... Oh, yeah, there's a couple. You're right. Down, it's couple four, of, but the last there. one's a doozy. So. Yeah, it's almost like two and one. Yeah. All right. What are our updates? What, what are, are the updates? So, silent releases that we had this week, uh, the five that I mentioned. Uh, dual pane view on keep. Uh, we've got multi support on doc sheets and slides. Uh, you can now view information about recipients on Android. Uh, keep contacts up to date with fewer clicks. So another little update there. And then finally, in the sound updates, you have notification permission is now required for devices running Android 13. Uh, then over on the published releases, we have uh, that uh, a new update to a, a beta API here. The calendar user availability API is going to be launching soon. You can sign up for the beta and preview that uh, information and documentation in advance. Uh, next, there's scaling our calendar interrupt offering. And then lastly, for the updates this week, uh, we have updating framing options for Google Meet hardware in the admin console. And then uh, four pieces of our four headlines in the news this week. We have, uh, it turns out that the there's an article here that says, turns out that the 12th gen Intel i3 is an absolute performance monster in Chromebooks, apparently. Uh, Zoom Slack competitor gets a new name and features. Uh, and then uh, Google canceled, oh yeah, that's right, I saw this. I was gonna post the uh, Android Police article, but you got the Verge article here. Uh, I had, I had wah, noticing wah, it. Wah, wah, wah. Uh, Google is canceling its Pixel Book. Uh, and it's shutting down the team building it. Damn it! So some changes Sorry. happening there. Probably part of that twenty percent performance improvement that was being talked about, right? Could be. And then finally, next on the road, locations have been announced. So yeah, I'm looking through the list here. Um, 
nothing in my neck of the woods. Two hours away in San no. Francisco. Yeah, I thought maybe something would be in the Midwest here in Chicago, but no. Come on, Sada. Where's the LA event? I mean, there's like, what, three, four, in, five in California? Yeah. I mean, is that necessary? Yeah. I guess. <laughs> All right. Most definitely necessary. Yeah, I don't know about that. Um, hmm. I thought I saw a um, a Chicago location. I have a, a different picture here. Not for this. It doesn't look like there's one for this. There is. There is. Let me find that. Uh, really? Yeah, I have it. I have it in the chat. One second here. Next on the road events. Um, Chicago, Illinois is hosted by Onyx. Yeah, I'll go through this other list. Sada is hosting in New Chicago. York, by the way. Why can't they host oh, in LA? Two. Where they're oh, wait, from? Oh, it says Ken, Ken Carter and Onyx are showing for Chicago. Oh, there's a second one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So uh, hmm. we'll we'll go through all of those locations and give you a heads up if you're in those any of those areas and you want to attend a uh, live stream watch party. They have some accompanying stuff along uh, with those events after the fact at each location. So we'll go into that after our updates. Oh, sorry. Get you take it away, there. Steve. <laughs> I will. I will. Let's take it away here. So uh, first on the list is that dual pane view on keep. Uh, so we've, you know, you may recall, we talked about this a while back. Uh, there was some uh, talk about the, the dual pane functionality uh, previously, uh, but the, I think that was the, oh, that's the, the, the drag out from keep um, feature from before. Uh, there's This is a new a little feature, dual pane view on keep, allowing you to browse keep notes on the left on the side of your screen while editing content on the right side. And this rollout is uh, going to be starting the 8th of September uh, for uh, rolling out to both rapid release and scheduled release domains. On a gradual rollout up to 15 days for visibility. I presume it's everyone because uh, everyone has keep. You've got the service. Uh, so, really, yeah, these are really brief ones, by the way. So, these are just very quick new updates in the recap post here at the end of the week. Uh, next, you have the multi instance support on docs, sheets, and slides. So, this is how you can get some better insight into your files by having the two windows open side by side. And this one is, uh, or has started on the 7th of September on, uh, on a gradual rollout up to 15 days for picture visibility for both rapid release and scheduled release domains. Uh, next, uh, some more information about your recipients on Android. So this is something that I have always struggled to kind of um, see the email or get to the copy it. So hopefully this is a little, maybe a little bit faster way to see what the person's email is or be able to copy it more quickly with less uh, selections and, and clicks. We'll see. Uh, but while you're using the Gmail app on Android, you can now view details about a person such as their phone number or email address by tapping their name or avatar when composing an email. And that was available to all users already when this uh, update came out last week. Uh, then you can now keep contacts up to date with fewer clicks. Well, ah, there you go. Just fewer clicks are happening, maybe just not in where the uh, information about recipients is at. But over here on the contacts, you can now edit someone's content information from their info card in apps like Gmail, Calendar, Voice, Docs, and Android on your device, which is great because I always found it very cumbersome that you have to, you know, if you clicked edit on a person's contact, it would have to open up over into a full new window and able to make those changes. and. Uh, this is going to be uh, definitely more seamless and less uh, cumbersome than it was before. So this one is going to start it on the 7th of September, uh, rolling out to rapid release and scheduled release domains on an extended rollout, uh, which is potentially longer than 15 days for visibility there. And then last on our silent releases, we have the notification permissions. That notification permissions are now required for devices running Android 13. I recently updated my phone to 13 and I uh, I did, you know what, I actually did notice fewer notifications. This could be why. I was like, why am I not getting notified anymore <laughs> about certain things? And it's like oddly quieter in the notification realm. And it, yeah, so if you've upgraded to 13 and notice a lack of notifications coming through, this could be why. There could be some other apps perhaps that 
need authorization to send you those notifications. It could be a way to uh, kind of tame the notification overload some people are getting. So they exp explicitly uh, allow this. Uh, rollout for that one was uh, for wrap release and um, actually it just didn't say that. I thought it was uh, saying something there. It is um, actually starting September 9th, undergrad rollout up to 15 days for visibility. And that was rolling out to all Android devices there. And then now we get into the published releases. And this first one, we actually have uh, two of them, three of them. I mean, actually all three are kind of related to calendar and events and things like that. So that's uh, the focus of this week, it appears. Uh, first one is that the calendar user user availability API is going to be launching into beta soon. And there is a sign-up uh, form where you can go and get access to the preview uh, and, and get access to and preview the documentation here in advance. So if you are interested in that, head on over, fill out the form uh, for the developer preview program, get access to that, and you can stay a step ahead of the new API. And I'm sure Jay and Ross are updating that already. It's automatically scaling to Gamma's already automatically going to support this uh, as it comes out. Uh, so some details in this update here talking about, you know, why you use the working location. I think most of us are familiar with what that is and how it works. But, you know, with this update, you're going to be able to programmatically make some adjustments for your end users. And they won't just have to rely on themselves to do things and update things, which, you know, who wants to rely on an end user to do something, right? Yeah. Um, updates on this one. Uh, I think we had, oh, there was some, how is this in this update? There was some other things happening. Oh, no, it's so the next update with, it coincided with an OAuth update to grants. I'll talk about that in the next update. Just wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything here on this one. Uh, but with this, uh, there is some uh, segmentation in terms of what uh, product SKUs is going to be available on. So this will not be available for Workspace Essentials. Business Starter, Enterprise Essentials Frontline, and G Suite Basic customers. So if you have one of those SKUs, uh, this change will not apply to those users that are licensed with any of those license types. And um, yeah, that uh, that wraps up that update. Uh, moving on to the next one in terms of scaling out our calendar interrupt offering. Uh, with calendar interrupt before, uh, you know, before this update, you had the ability to create one uh, service account, essentially. And that one service account was always uh, handling the requests for all users in your org to query that information over an exchange. And of course, for large organizations, this was causing a bit of a concern for them because it would, you know, time out and it wouldn't update uh, in real time, it appeared. So with this update, you can now define multiple service accounts with that exchange role account and it will uh, Google will cycle through those and handle scaling to larger uh, subsets of users much better. So uh, welcome a, a welcome uh, update and uh, you know I think with all the calendar interrupt updates that have been happening, I, I mentioned the OAuth 2 uh, grant requirements that are uh, also going to be happening. I need to do that, remember, before the 1st of October. Uh, I think, you know, I'd probably do, uh, I'm thinking about workspace admins here for a second, the video that Brian did on Calendar Interrupt, probably do a bit of a refresh on that video and get a new one out there with all the new features that we're seeing with Calendar Interrupt. Yeah, I think it's a good idea to rehash a bunch of those videos, given that uh, we haven't done that in a while, and uh, quite a bit has changed. Yeah. Um, even, even the experience on mm. the, uh, uh, what do you call it? Running windows on Chrome OS. We haven't updated that video either since it's it first came out and, uh, we have a whole yeah. slew of new hardware to, to play around with, with that one. So yeah, should, uh, get those on the calendar along with our, uh, Chrome browser quarterly was supposed to be quarterly update. Yeah. Trying <laughs> to, trying to get that commitment there, get that yep. uh, on a regular basis. So yeah, we'll get um, it done. Yeah. And so looking at the uh, this update here in terms of rollout, 
This one started the 6th, 6th of September on a rapid release uh, for rapid release and scheduled release domains. And that is on a gradual rollout up to 15 days for visibility there and available to all workspace customers using calendar interop. And then finally, um, another calendar related uh, feature. This one is about updating framing options for Google Meet hardware in the admin console. And again, this ties into a previous update that was announced uh, regarding frame framing in Google Meet. So this is just kind of continuation to uh, to roll out framing to meet and, and uh, meet hardware required improvements. Uh, and the admin console, of course, will be updated to reflect this. So keep an eye out over there for some little changes. Uh, really no action required for anyone on this, uh, as long as things are available. And you have some capable hardware, for example. Uh, rollout pace for this one, pretty uh, straightforward. Uh, rapid release and scheduled release domains will start seeing this on the 8th of September, or have started seeing it. And this is on a gradual rollout up to 15 days for visibility there. Uh, in terms of uh, devices, uh, SKUs that are, this is going to be available on, it's available to all workspace customers as well as just basic and business and available for, for when uh, it's being used on supported Google Meet hardware devices that have not reached their expiration date of auto updates. So pretty straightforward. This week on the updates, I hope Jesse can excite us a little bit more with the uh, <laughs> other topics in the news here. All right. Uh, this first one I am actually particularly invested in because uh, I've long been a, a, a strict, um, uh, I guess, advocate for only buying i5 or above Chromebooks. i3s are great if you want something that is, you know, I5. to be used for a couple of years as a, as you know, a, a decent device. But if you want real power that's going to last a long time, you want to get the latest and greatest i5 with 8 or, if possible, 16 gig of RAM. Uh, this update is that it turns out the 12th gen Intel i3, the 12th is the latest, uh, Intel i3 processor is actually a beast when it comes to Chromebooks. And this is weird because, like I said, generally I would always say go with the i5s. But from what I'm seeing, the i5s yeah. of the 12th gen series for what's out, cough, cough, uh, Dragonfly, HP, is extremely expensive. But the i3 version, relatively more expensive. And um, so this is an article from Chrome Unbox. They got their hands on it. And um, this is interesting to me because we were actually just looking at the, um, the HP X360 that we like to buy for the, the Chromebook, and we can't find it anywhere. Uh, it, was, it was, if I'm not mistaken, it's the consumer-ish version of the HP Enterprise uh, Chromebook, and we would get it at Best Buy, and it's been sold out for weeks. So I don't know what's going on there at HP. If you guys are... Uh, putting out an updated model or uh, changing things up, let us know because we'd like to buy them. And right now our favorite model has disappeared. So um, that being said, now that I'm looking at some of the new models that are coming onto the market, perhaps the i3 12th gen is in fact a, uh, a better option here. So if you're interested in the uh, specifics, they were testing it on an i3, the 1215U processor with eight gig of RAM and 120 gig of storage. And uh, they've been reviewing the HP Elite Dragonfly Chromebook, the Acer Chromebook Vero 514, which I haven't even seen yet, so i got to take a look at that, and the Acer Chromebook Spin 714, which I did just get hands-on and did not like at all. Um, they all come with i5 or i7, um, but hmm. from what they're seeing here is that the model with the i3 actually, I believe, was, uh, was outpacing them, um, well, last generation's i5s. So take a look at this. They have all the metrics in here and uh, and the scores, and that's something that I'm going to have to get my hands on one and definitely check out for myself. Steve, did you want to say something there? I just want, yeah, Dragonfly would be a good one for me to try. I'd, I'd like to see Oh, yeah, one. sure. Hey, HP, you want to send us over a couple models, a couple laptops, a couple different uh, yeah, well, models to try out? We'll give them the we'll full run. We'll turn them once we're done. In sure, if they ask nicely. <laughs> right, in a couple of years' time. Right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. Uh, the next article that we have here is uh, Zoom, the, 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 the Z name, the mm -hmm. word you're not supposed to say when you're talking uh, to Googlers and whatnot. So Zoom, I don't know if you know this, has a Slack competitor because, of course, they do. And uh, they're giving it a new name. It was uh, Zoom Chat, and apparently that was confusing people with 
chat in Zoom, which you do whilst on a call. Zoom chat is just like Microsoft Teams or Slack or Google Spaces. Um, they are now calling it, to confuse everybody even further, even further, well, that's a fun word, further, uh, Zoom Teams chat or Zoom team chat, not to be confused with Teams or chat or et cetera. Anyway, so um, I guess Google's not the only one with confusing name changes, but if you're over on Zoom, uh, this is another way for them to help distinguish which uh, chat, in fact, you are talking about. It's the team chat and not the chat in the Zoom video call. So yeah. if you're interested in that, there's some more details over in this Verge article as well. Or not to be confused with Google chat, too. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's what I was <laughs> alluding to when I just said chat. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. Yeah. Um, Further in the Chromebook news, and very, very disappointing because I was a huge fan of both the original Chrome mm -hmm. um, Pixelbook and the Pixelbook Go, Google has killed them. So they had announced at I.O. that they were working on a new one, that they were having some more come out, and there have been a whole lot of rumors um, showing off, or not showing off, a whole lot of uh, rumors from the development kits that are out there and uh, benchmarks that are being seen that, hey, yes, Google's working on something, it's coming. It's going to be great. And there's a lot of us who have been complaining about this for a long time because Google has not refreshed the line even once since the Pixelbook Go came out. Not even a generation bump, Tyler, nothing. Three, four it was a long time. Ago. So, you know, I love the form factor for the Pixelbook Go. It could have had a brighter screen, uh, perhaps a better screen, now that it's been a couple of years and screens have improved tremendously, especially if you're paying $1,000 for the model, um, you know, with, the, with, with 16 gig yeah. of RAM, as I did back in the day. Uh, the original Pixelbook, uh, at that time, I wasn't such a fan of the 3.2 configuration, but now using the HP um, X360, or otherwise known as the Enterprise model, yeah. um, I've become a fan of it. I like it. It works really, really well, uh, especially in Google Workspace. And, um, you know, that was the original Pixel 3, orient sorry, the original Pixelbook orientation. And I uh, would have loved to have seen them come out with updates to both of those. Uh, but apparently that's not going to happen. I guess Google is happy with the amount of momentum that they helped to generate in the Chromebook market with all of the wonderful partners, be it HP, Asus, Acer, Lenovo is coming out swinging hard, but they got to focus more on the 14-inch or 13.5-inch category for me. Um, and, uh, you know, I guess uh, Google's going to leave it to everybody else. They didn't want to do that to the Pixel division, the phones, but I guess the laptops, um, something had to go, and it was them. Yeah. So. I'm glad Sad the phone's sticking around, I'm waiting for the new one to come out. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, the, the biggest mover and shaker in October, Android world is Samsung. October, October 6th is the announcement for that, I believe, I read today. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, yeah. because the entire thing hasn't already been leaked already, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. But I guess in the cell phone space, there's still more work to be done, and Google still wants to remain a major competitor over there, which, you know, I guess makes sense because, you know, it's like I was going to say, is the next biggest player in terms of Android is Samsung, mm -hmm. and it doesn't even really look like Sam doesn't really even look like Android all that much. So, and it does, but it's Samsung's flavor. So if you like Samsung, great. Otherwise, um, Google's going to keep on swinging for you. And, uh, and building those phones as far as we know. All right, last but not least, um, kind of two in one here because i got these two different images. Um, mm -hmm. Google Next is oh, yeah. not going to have the proper in-person component uh, for, you know, for us low yep. customers and advocates and obsessors over the over the, over the product, but uh, only select few will be able to go to the actual Google Next. The rest of us will have to settle for these events on the road, which is an interesting way of putting it out there. But as we were saying at the top of the episode, uh, not enough. There's got to be some more. There's a whole bunch in, in California, but hey, California's huge, and there's still not one in the LA area. So um, Tony Miles over at SADA, if you guys are listening, mm -hmm. uh, I would love to uh, help set this up with you guys and uh, come down and even speak or host or whatever. Let me know. You know how to get in touch. Uh, the other locations we have here are as follows. Um, I'm going to read off of the other image that I have here because it seems to be more complete. The image that I have that I'll share in the uh, show notes blog post, well, I'll share them both, but this one has some more information on it, so I guess it's not fully hashed out exactly what's going to be at every location. But um, you've got Austin, Texas is hosted by 66 Degrees. San Francisco is hosted by... Uh, Asana, but I believe I also saw on. Yeah, see, this is this is confusing. There are different different information on the image, 
as well mm -hmm. as the information on the page. Okay, so San Francisco has both Asana and Do It International, as well as Informica. Inf sorry, Informatica is in San Francisco, as well as in Santa Clara, California, is, Pal is hosted by Palo Alto Networks. Then you've also got um, uh, Do It International is in San Francisco. You have in Austin, Texas, it's hosted by 66 Degrees. I believe I said that. Uh, Seattle, Washington yeah. is hosted by F5. San Jose has HPE, so there's another California in there. Um, Boston, Massachusetts has uh, hosted by Data Robot. And uh, Chicago has two of them. I imagine Steve will be at one of them. One is by Ken, Carta, okay. Ken and Carta. How's that pronounced? Ken Carta, do you know? Ken and Carta? Ken, Ken I'm Carta. familiar with them. Oh. Ken Carta? Okay. There's a plus in between the names, so I wasn't yeah. really sure there. And uh, another oh, event by Carta, Onyx. Yeah, that's right. yeah. um, Toronto, Canada, for our friends up north, is going to be hosted by PwC. New York is also going to have, well, New York's going to have two events, one hosted by SADA, as I mentioned before, and another one by Python. Dean, Bethian, I never heard of them either. Um, another Massachusetts one in Cambridge is hosted by Quantify, and one in Atlanta, Georgia, by Slalom. So um, people all over the place here. I actually am a little bit curious what it takes to work with Google to host one of these. Maybe I'll just host it myself. Um, seems like the information is still being developed. So as we get more information here, we can definitely bring it to you and post it to our various channels as well as on the show. Um, but it should be a very, very exciting time, even if I can't personally attend any of the day one festivities because it will be a Jewish holiday of which we are totally offline and don't do any work, et cetera, et cetera. So um, sad times there, but I will have to do a lot of catching up and then probably record that night or the next morning at some point with Steve so that we can get out a recap episode for all of you. And that's all of the updates that I have here. Anything else, Steve? Anything nope. closing for the week? I'm good. I'm tired today. All right. I actually uh, amended the bio a little bit here, so pay attention, folks. It's not going to be the same cookie cutter. That's all for this week. Send us your questions and comments on Twitter at Workspace Recap and on our website at uh, WorkspaceRecap.com. At this point, you're probably like, what did he change? Hit the subscribe button and leave us a review on your favorite podcasting platform. And if you're watching us on YouTube, leave us a comment down below and give us a thumbs up to help others discover our amazing content. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time on Workspace Recap. <laughs>